Since OpenAI launched their GPT store on January the 10th, there's been a massive buzz all over the internet. Seems like every YouTuber and their grandmothers have been talking about it. Me? But I decided to wait a little bit for the hype to cool down. I have taken my time to explore the GPT store, to consume other people's content about the GPTs, but also to build a couple of GPTs myself to experience them firsthand. All right, that's great. But what's the verdict here, Ronnie? What can GPTs really do for me? Well, that's exactly what this video is all about. Hey, what's up, everyone? Ronnie here. Welcome back to our channel. This is the right place for you to learn about ChatGPT, to learn about DALL-E, or to learn about good old Canva. Today, we talk about ChatGPT in one of the massive announcements made by OpenAI not so long ago about them launching the GPT store. I'm going to pretend that some of you have never heard about GPT, so I'm going to show you what they are, where to find them, and what they can do. And then I will show you one of the GPTs that I have built. I will give you an opportunity to try it out for yourself as well and tell you all about that experience. So if you guys are ready, let's start with introducing the GPT store. Before we dive in, there is an important thing you need to know is that at the current time, GPTs are only available to ChatGPT Plus users. So that's the paid users, ChatGPT teams and ChatGPT enterprise users. So ChatGPT free users won't have access to these GPTs or the GPT store. What you're seeing here is the blog post that OpenAI used to introduce the GPT store to their community of users. So they give Give you a quick overview of what the GPT store looks like. Now, when you switch over to your ChatGPT Plus account, the way you access the GPT store is by simply clicking on that Explore GPTs that should be right here on top of your left side panel. So let's click here. So this is what it looks like. You have on top of it all a big search bar that says Discover and Create Custom Version of ChatGPT that combine instructions, extra knowledge, and any combination of skills. All right, so you can start by simply searching any of the GPTs that users, the community, have been publishing on the GPT store. So let's try a search about, let's say, scuba diving. Is there any GPTs about scuba diving? Yes, there's plenty of GPTs about scuba diving already in the marketplace. And by all means, like this has taken the internet by storm. So everybody started to create GPTs about all sorts of topics. So it's really interesting to start typing different interests that you might have. Like if you're interested in sneakers, like I am, is there any GPTs on sneakers? Yes, there's plenty of them. So you probably can already find GPTs about every single topic you could think of, which could be a great thing if you are just a consumer of GPTs. But if you are thinking about building your own, it means you'd have to dig a little bit deeper if you really want to come up with an original idea, right? So that's the first thing you see here is that big, search bar. Okay, let's clear that search bar and move down a bit in the interface. I want to kind of introduce you to everything that you see here on screen, your first experience. I want to be your tour guide. So next is these categories of topics. So you could filter by the top picks, which is what you will have as default tab when you log into this page. You could search for GPTs related to DAL-E, which is pretty cool. Okay, so you have here logo creator, cartoonize yourself, logo GPT. So a lot of things about logo. This one seems super interesting. Super describe, upload any image to get a similar one using DALL-E 3 along with a detailed prompt. So that's kind of like using ChatGPT's vision to give me a prompt of a specific image. So that could be very interesting. Consistent character building. Character consistency is a huge debate about what AI and DALL-E can or cannot do yet. I have created a very interesting tutorial about character character design last week. So I highly recommend you check it out. I'm going to leave the thumbnail right here so you can see what it looks like so you can find it and watch it later. So yeah, those are the DALL-E related GPTs right here. Let's come back to my top filters right here, my top tabs. Next, we have some GPTs in the writing category. Next, you have your productivity category. And when you click here, you will see that Canva is part 
of that productivity category. I'm thinking about a dedicated tutorial just about the Canva GPT. What do you think? Is that something you'd like watching on the channel? Let me know in the comments section. So coming back to my different categories here, we have research and analysis, programming, education, and lifestyle, right? So that is the second section, I would say, of this GPT landing page right here. If you continue to scroll down a little bit, you'll find the featured section, okay? So that section is OpenAI's top pick, like four favorite GPTs of the week. They promised on their blog post to update this section weekly so we can expect to find some new things here and this will help us discover new GPTs okay because they believe it's important also know that there have been millions of GPTs created so to be featured in one of these four we are talking four out of several millions is a huge deal so I need to kind of give some kudos to Canva here which is the first app that is currently featured on that featured GPT list top four right here right inside chat GPT so really well done Canva you're number one and I am looking forward to discover that GPT all right so when you scroll down a little bit more after the featured section you will see the trending section so these are the most popular GPTs created by the community and you can click on see more to find up to 12 of these trending GPTs next you'll have a section of GPTs labeled by ChatGPT. So these are the GPTs that have been built by the ChatGPT team themselves. All right. So you will find DALI here and you will find a bunch of other interesting GPTs. These are the OG GPTs if you want. Let's click on see more to see how many of them there are at the moment. 17. So right now we have 17 GPTs that are kind of featured that have been created by the OpenAI team. And if you continue to scroll down, you will pretty much go through the different categories right here that correspond to these different tabs right here. So all the way down to lifestyle. All right, so that is pretty much what you will find in this GPT landing page right here. Again, in order to access this section of ChatGPT, well, first, you need to be a ChatGPT Plus user. And second, you simply need to click on this little Explore GPT button right here, and you will land here. Now, there is more to it. And that brings me to the next section of this video, how to build your own GPTs. Now, the beauty of GPTs that are pretty much custom versions of ChatGPT or specific use cases for ChatGPT. It's GPT applied to a specific end goal. So the beauty of these GPTs is that you can build your own, okay? So there is a big green button right here that says create. When you click it, this is where you will land. Now, basically there are two different ways to build these GPTs. You can use the configure button where you will need to manually input the name of your GPT, a description of what it does. And then the important bit of building a GPT via the configure button is the instructions box right here. So this is where you will need to give some instructions to ChatGPT on what your custom GPT does. I'm going to create a separate tutorial about building GPTs. This tutorial is more about giving you a tour, but I'm just mentioning because I think it's important for you to understand how they are built. But this is not for today. So that's one way. It's just if you know what you're doing, you can start using the configure button. The other way is to simply have a conversation with the assistant, with the GPT builder. So here you will simply talk to GPT builder as if you were prompting chat GPT and explain in natural language, whatever language you use, explain to the GPT builder what kind of GPT you are trying to build. And by having this conversation with the GPT builder, it will help you build your GPT. So there is no code involved for you. The coding bit is going to be auto-generated by the GPT builder. Now that is very powerful and it's also an entire different tutorial that I will create on the channel, promised. But let's not mix everything here because otherwise we'll end up with a two-hour tutorial. That's not what we want. We want to get straight to the point. So just know that you can build your very own GPT. Now what I want to show you is some of the GPT that I have built previously. Okay, so you have this 
other button right here that says my GPTs. So let's click here. And as you can see, I have created a couple, like four different GPTs. One is an email assistant, okay, that helps me answer specific emails. There are some emails, for example, brand collaborations, brand deals, people reaching out to us to create a video on the channel about their product or whatever. So it's always the same kind of answers that I have to provide to these brands. So I created some templates and I have the email assistant right here that will help me, for example, say, oh, you know what? I'm not interested. So it will generate an email saying to that brand, look, I'm not interested in this collaboration right now. Or maybe I am interested. So I will ask the GPT to generate an answer with my specific prices for collaborations, et cetera, et cetera. So that's the email assistant that I created. We come back to my GPTs here. The one I want to show you in this tutorial is this one, Harry the hamster, an adorable hamster companion ready for a new adventure. So let me show you what it looks like. Harry the hamster is the second GPT I tried to create. And this is, I think, the best one I have created so far. What was my goal with this GPT? Well, it was to kind of try to generate consistent characters with DAL-E, right? And not only to generate the characters, like the images, but also to create a consistent story with these characters. So let me show you how it works. We have these four conversation starters. So one is Harry doing yoga outside. Another one is Harry cooking a delicious snack, Harry trying out a new hobby, or Harry going out on an adventure. Okay, so you could start with any of these and then DAL-E via ChatGPT will generate a visual for that. Or you could prompt anything right here in the prompt box. So it's really up to you how you want to start. Let's start by Harry doing yoga outside. So what you don't see here is the custom instructions kicking in behind the scene. I'm going to give you a look at these custom instructions in just a second. But what's happening is that. So there are some custom instructions given to DAL-E right here in order for it to generate a consistent, I would say, visual style for Harry, my hamster. So there you go. Here is my first visual. Here is an image of Harry the hamster enjoying a yoga session outside. He looks serene and focused, perfectly capturing his adventurous and health conscious personality. What would you like Harry to do next? And then the GPT will give you, will always prompt you to continue the story. So that's one of the things that I like about this GPT. So you want maybe Harry explore a mysterious cave or Harry having a picnic with friends or Harry stargazing on a clear night. So you could just type in the number. Let me show you. For example, let's go for three and let's see if that character consistency kind of works, really works or doesn't work at all. It's always a surprise because, you know, with ChatGPT, with DAL-E, it's always about probability. There is no clear way yet to create this super consistent characters. But let's see. Let's see what my second image looks like. There we go. So we have another version of Harry. It's not super consistent, I would say. It's kind of consistent. The little bows, like the hands, they are still little here. The fur is kind of the same. The visual style, I would say it's pretty consistent. The eyes, yeah, I would say it's like 85% consistent. What do you think? Just let me know in the comment, like are these kind of consistent or not so much? Now let's try one last thing before I show you kind of the behind the scene of this GPT. Let's try a custom prompt. All right. So I would like to see Harry riding its blue bicycle at the beach. All right. Let's see if DAL-E can generate this image maintaining the consistent visual style for my character right here. So there we go. We have Harry on a blue bicycle on the beach and that's pretty good. It seems like the first image was slightly better and then we got every time like a little bit less detailed characters. So we might lose a little bit as we prompt, maybe as ChatGPT gets lazy some kind of way. Not completely sure, but that's what I wanted to show you. That is my first attempt at creating a visual storytelling kind of app that could be great for children because they only have to push one 
button to continue the story. Yeah, with a custom GPT. Now let's have a look under the hood and see what this GPT is actually made out of. Okay, so in order to know that, you will need to go back to your GPT, I would say, homepage. And then right here next to its name, you should see a little arrow. So let's click that arrow. You can learn about the GPT. And you can actually see the behind the scene when you get to the edit GPT part. So this is what the behind the scene looks like for the Harry the Hamster GPT right here. So we see the first box with the name. Okay, Harry the Hamster. Description. We have a little profile picture that I created myself. You can also let the GPT generate your profile picture with DALL-E. They can do that. The set of instructions, you see they are not very long. Okay, my conversation starters that I also customized. And then you have a space here called knowledge. Now, knowledge is ChatGPT letting you upload custom files here with maybe a data set that you might have in a spreadsheet. Or in this case, I uploaded a couple of reference photos of Harry the hamster the way I wanted it to look. Okay, so you can upload different things here. You can upload PDFs with some instructions or a bunch of text, a bunch of data. You can upload .txt files. You can upload Excel files. You can upload JPEG. So a bunch of different files that will constitute that knowledge base. Now, this could be good if you do own, for example, like us, we own entire courses and these courses have been written in documents. So we could upload the documents and let people ask questions about the content of this document and generate that as answers, like force ChatGPT to use only the content of these documents that are included in the knowledge base to generate its answers. So that's something you can do here. Now, there is a risk when you upload documents there that these documents might leak to users. All right. So it's not completely safe right now. Like ChatGPT has not created the infrastructure for the data that you upload when creating custom GPTs to be completely safe. Right now, pretty much anything that you upload there can be like discovered by the user and the user community. So I wouldn't recommend uploading any sensitive information in here or proprietary information that you don't want anyone to access, basically. So if you're not ready to give it all away to everyone, don't use it to build a GPT. Or if you do, keep that GPT just for you and the people you trust, right? Like I am going to share Harry the Hamster with you guys. Also, there is nothing personal in here. There is no information about my business or anything. It's just my set of instructions. But if you did have, like for example, I have another GPT that I worked on called Rondi Tutorials, which has this massive spreadsheet with all of the tutorials on our YouTube channel, the titles, the duration, all of that stuff. I will not publish this publicly right now because of that security issue. Also, don't just take it from me. What you see here is a tweet from an OpenAI employee called Logan, who is a developer relations at OpenAI, right? And so he tweeted this few days after ChatGPT released the GPT store. It says a quick PSA for people building GPTs. All of the information made available to a GPT, including the prompt, instructions, and attached files may be used by the model to construct a response to the user. So don't include information you do not want the users to know. All right, so that is super clear. Your data is pretty much not safe when you use it in the knowledge base. I just want you to be aware of that. There are tons of videos out there on YouTube, on LinkedIn, showing you how to crack, how to hack other people's GPT to get back these custom instructions, download these files that you're not supposed to access. So yeah, be safe when you build your own GPT. Now, back to the GPT builder here. I want to show you one or two last things before we wrap up this section of the video. There are a few things, a few capabilities you can also activate when you're building your GPT. For example, you can give your GPT access to the web, okay, with the web browsing functionality right here. Next, you can allow DAL-E to generate images for your GPT. Obviously here, this one is activated because it's all about image generation. And then you can also activate code interpreter if you are going to process data or analyze data with your GPT. And last but not least, you have the actions button right here. You see it says create new action. So when you click here, you can pretty much let your GPT retrieve information or take actions outside of chat GPT. So the way that works, you will use APIs to connect the GPT 
key to another piece of software or another tech that uses API to communicate with other products, okay? So for example, you could tap into the Canva API if you have access to it or the YouTube API or whatever app that you might own API so that you can connect ChatGPT to this other product and then have that other product take specific actions. So I believe there is a lot that can be created with this. Not an expert into this, so I don't really want to venture in there because to be honest, I don't really know how it works. I do not have any product that has an API, so I'm not going to get into this, but there are tons of experts out there that will teach you that much better than I do. All right, back to my GPT here, my Harry the Hamster. Again, I will leave a link to the GPT in the description of this video so you can try it out. Tell me what you sincerely, honestly think about it. I mean, I'm not expecting only compliments here. I'm also really open to criticism as long as they are constructive. So yeah, let me know what you think of this character. Let me know if you think it's consistent, mostly. That's really what I'm interested in. All right, guys, I think we are making some good progress. We now have a pretty good idea of what the GPT store is all about. And we've seen that we can create custom GPTs. OK, I'll show you how to create them in another video. But you got the gist of what you can do. Now, let's talk about the question you all probably have in mind. Can I make some money with these GPTs? Well, I'm going to try to answer this question by first referring to the process that you will need to go through if you do want to make some money with these GPTs. So the first thing is that in order to make these GPTs public, you will need to go through two steps, right? The first step is that you will need to verify your builder profile, okay? So how do you verify your builder profile? Well, you'll first have to request that verification to OpenAI. So in order to do so, just head over your name right here, okay? Settings and beta. And then you should see a tab saying builder profile. Once you're here, you will have to follow the prompts to actually verify your builder profile. I have already done it. So this is what I see here. I can choose between displaying the name of the account holder. Okay, so here's the name of our company, Team Rondi SL. Or we could choose to display the website of our company. Our website is still under construction, so I didn't go for that option. But when you go to your builder profile, you should have the necessary information information here that you need to follow. And that is step one of actually publishing your GPT. All right, let me close that and show you once you've done that, how can you actually publish your GPT to the GPT store? Well, you'll come back to your actual GPTs. So let's go back to editing Harry the hamster. And so here you see this green button says update. So I'm going to click on this and it gives me three publishing options. Only me, anyone with a link and everyone. Now that third option here, here. The everyone option is the one you want to tick if you want this GPT to be published on the GPT store. It will then need to go through approval from the OpenAI's team before it hits the marketplace, before it hits the GPT store. But that's the way you do. Okay, be aware of that security threat I mentioned earlier. All right, so me here, I'm not going to go down this way. I'm just going to make this anyone with the link. Okay, and I'm going to share that link in the description of the video for you guys to try it out. So once you decided on which kind of visibility option you want to go for, just confirm and there you go. Your GPT should be updated. I do have the link now. I'm going to copy that for later and paste it in the description so that you guys can enjoy it. All right, Ronnie, but if I publish my GPT in the GPT store, how do I make money? Well, that's a great question. And to answer it, I'm just going to refer to the little information we currently have have about that. And for that, we are going to go back to OpenAI's blog post. This blog post right here, introducing the GPT store. So if you scroll down, there is a little paragraph right here saying that builders can earn based on GPT usage. All right. So it seems like OpenAI is going to set a program and this program will start in the US first. That will pretty much be kind of like a bunch of money they put to distribute to the different GPT builders. So based on how much your GPT is being used by users, how much time they spent using, playing around with your GPT, you will be kind of compensated by 
by that fund that OpenAI is putting together. Let me read the official communication for you here. In Q1, we will launch a GPT Builder revenue program. As a first step, US builders will be paid based on user engagement with their GPTs. We provide details on the criteria for payments as we get closer. So I guess that's a good news if you are in the US or less good news if like us, you're not in the US. But hey, that's often like this with tech companies, especially those based in the US. The good news is that there will be a program, a builder revenue program. So we'll probably hear more about this in the coming month, maybe. I'm not sure it will be ready in the coming weeks, but the coming month definitely we'll see more about this. Now, can I make a lot of money with this? My answer is I'm not sure. I actually don't think it's going to be that easy to make a lot of money with GPTs because one, there will be massive competition and two, they are quite easy to clone or to reproduce, right? If you see my GPT and if you can steal my custom instructions, it's a no brainer to kind of create a similar GPT. So I don't think it's going to be a massive source of income, but we've seen that we can add a link to our GPT builder profile and that link could bring good traffic to our website or to our YouTube channel or even to a specific video, I guess, of our YouTube channel. So this a flux of traffic could be somehow monetized if you know what you're doing. All right. So that could be another potential way of monetizing GPTs. And then I see a third way you could probably monetize GPTs is to build a good one and to sell it. For example, you solve a problem a particular organization might have through a custom GPT. So if you can save them a bunch of time and you can demonstrate that to them, you could probably do a one-off sale and sell your GPT or the link to your GPT to this organization. How much money you can make with this? I don't know. It's really up to you, your talent and your negotiation skills. But I I see this as a way of potentially making an income with GPTs. All right, guys, I think I'm going to leave it here for today. Thank you for watching until the end. Leave me some feedback in the comment section. It's always interesting, especially when I talk about topics other than Canva. All right, I really want to keep my finger on the pulse of our audience of you guys and this channel to see if we are going in the right direction. So I'm going to leave you with the rest of our generative AI playlist right here. Don't forget all the links in the description and enjoy playing around with Harry.